All right, everyone, we're going to get started. Uh, so today, right now, we have uh, AT&T speaking. So um, before we get started, I uh, just want to remind everyone we have an open control user group tonight at 6.30 p.m. at Fenway Park, followed by a dinner event. So uh, make sure you guys try to come out to there. Uh, you'll see postcards around the room in the back, just RSVP at that link. Um, but for now, let's give a hand for AT&T. Good evening, guys. Um, today, we're going to talk about telco edge use cases and container networking. So this is Kandan Kadrivel from at and And my name is Kasim Arham. I am at and SC from Juniper Networks. Open Contrail is the topic today. So we will cover that together. So I'm going to talk about uh, uh, what is edge use cases and container networking. Uh, some of the material I'm going to use on this presentation is that uh, some part I already covered in a couple of presentations done yesterday and today. Uh, but also going to focus on the networking aspect of, you know, what do we, what do we look from a networking aspect, uh, especially from a software-defined networking? What do we expect from the uh, solution uh, need to satisfy the use cases? That's what primarily we're going to focus on today. So this is a trend chart that's something you know everybody is interested in now, and the people like to understand you know how much the VM and how much the container is going to be utilized by the network virtual function. So this is a million dollar question that everybody is asking, and we like to share the insight what we see as an industry where this whole thing is going with respect to the VM and the container, uh, because when we talk about the networking, uh, it need to support seamless you know, way of networking, either it is a VM or either it is a container. So that's why you know, this chart to show that you know, like what is the trend is actually evolving into and where do we need the container and the VM uh, virtual network to work with. So in this chart, you can see that you know, like today, uh, if you take the enterprise workload, the top portion of the slide, uh, today, the enterprise workload already can start using container. And most of the enterprise workloads are like application servers, web servers. They can already start moving towards the container. And the VM utilization is actually going down and down with respect to the enterprise workload. So when we move on to the 2018 and 19, we can see that you know, like there's going to be a lot of big bubble with respect to the container. Uh, 2019, when more we move on, it's going to be like a very, very less number of VM, and there's going to be more containers. Uh, if we take a network virtual function, uh, this, this is the area that you know, uh, it needs a lot of other work uh, to make the container all to adopt into the, the functionality what has been served out of the network virtual function. Uh, I want to give you guys an example. What is a network virtual function? For example, a firewall, a load balancer, or it could be in a telco application serving in you know, like a routing functionality. Uh, so these sort of network virtual function, you know, like as of today, uh, from a container aspect, it is only a very less number of virtual network function. Uh, it's picking up with respect to the container. But most of them are uh, virtual machine as of today. Uh, but when we go to the trend of 2018 and 19, you know, like this is definitely going to change. And we're going to see that, you know, like the container is start coming up more and more. But when we go to the 2019, uh, definitely, you know, the container is really going to be, go, become big. And the VMs is going to be, you know, like getting <coughs> in small number. Uh, but industry has to do a lot to make the container uh, adopted by the network virtual function. Why this is a huge difference between the enterprise workload and in terms of the virtual network function, why it is taking this much time, why, why everything cannot be a container. Uh, the reason is that the nature of the workload, which is running as a virtual network function, uh, the security aspect of it, the performance aspect of it, and and also uh, in terms of you know like in there is a when there is something need to be done with the, you know like a patching, uh, upgrading the life cycle of the VNF itself you know like it also need to consider all those ecosystem. So it is not just the container, it's not just the VM, but also the tooling around it also has to grow up. So that's why we see a, you know like a, a, a very slow trend towards the container on the virtual network function versus enterprise workloads are already picking up a lot. So from a open stack services or any other control plane services, right? 
they they can easily can adapt into the uh, container and there is a benefit of you know like getting into the container world from there and we see the trend that you know like even today uh, OpenStack services or even the you know contrail services uh, especially the contrail controller uh, could be run as actually the uh, as a container so this is a trend to show the use cases uh, what is uh, this is not uh, just a specific telco use case you know this is more of a generic uh, a generic use case you know could be applied to anyone uh, who is using the openstack and kubernetes and the container world uh, you can see that you know like the use case number 1 is uh, how do we support the Kubernetes cluster uh, inside of OpenStack Cloud? This is a well-supported use case today, and some of the uh, you know public providers are already supporting this use case. Uh, this is to take the uh, you know uh, Kubernetes cluster and run as a service in, in, within the OpenStack. And this is probably this is more of a tenant use case. When I say tenant use case, you know, like this is a more of a, like application use case than the infrastructure use case. Then the second one is like Kubernetes is running as a uh, um, sorry, Kubernetes is hosting the OpenStack. Uh, th this is a use case what I was talking about. You know, like this this is where you know like currently a lot of focus is currently going on from my infrastructure world, uh, taking the uh, control plane elements, something like you know Contrail controller, something like OpenStack controller, something like a log collection control controllers those could be run as a containers the third use case is you know like again uh, this is uh, this is where you know like more work need to be done in terms of you know like supporting uh, both container and the vm in the same umbrella because this is very critical uh, today you know like uh, we can see that you know magnum is a one good project that providing that one umbrella so when i say one umbrella what does that really mean so i'm a user and i want to create a container and i also want to create a vm in most of the situation, you know, like if the application is already there in the in the cloud, it is already running as a VM, for example. And now I'm trying to create some container, or I want to transition my VM, some part of my VM into the container. I do not want to create another tenant or another project within OpenStack uh, to really go and create the container as a separate. Because this will create a lot of issues from an operational aspect that, you know, the logistic of maintaining the different workload because end, as an end user, doesn't matter to me either it is a VM or a container, all I need is actually the workload, right? So, so it has to be uh, under the umbrella of the same user and all the authentication mechanism, all other, you know, like the structures of, you know, like doing an analytic log collection, all the stuff has to be seamless, either it is a VM or a container. So this is where the ecosystem has to really evolve. And in the next slide, I'm gonna talk about the networking aspect of it. So this is where you know like has to be very seamless. You know today uh, we can really see in the field that uh, people are addressing um, container networking and people are addressing the uh, VM networking, which has already been addressed. You know like almost, uh, but there is less work currently going on between the combination of connecting the VM and the containers, and that really need to happen so that you know like we can have a way of you know like providing a seamless way of providing the networking between the containers and the vm so in this case uh, i want to explain you guys the networking scenario uh, the reason why i say open stack network use cases the reason is that you know like we still like to see that uh, you know open stack apis the neutron has been used and there may be other API set of APIs which are not supported by the Neutron could be directly coming to the SDN controller itself. But the majority of the API uh, to be uh, handled by the Neutron itself so that this tenancy model what I explained with respect to OpenStack being preserved. So in this case you can see that you know like on the top we have the Neutron and the CNI plugin uh, for, the, uh, for the Kubernetes. So from a use case number one, uh, in this case Kubernetes cluster hosted by OpenStack, you know, uh, in the previous slide I talked about those three use cases. From a networking perspective, how does that look like? So the OpenStack cloud could be handling, you know, the uh, container inside a VM, and this is the use case, you know, like I think most of the public cloud providers are supporting it. Uh, this is very seamless for a lot of people because you know they want to be not worried about the security aspect. They are not worried about you know like a, uh, the tooling aspect of the thing, which needs the life cycles of the particular application. So they're just putting the container inside a VM. So this is the sub use cases of the number one, and the other use case is that installing the container directly into the uh, into the bare metal. So these two area for the tenant use case under the OpenStack cloud, you know, I, I would call this as a use case number one. 
in the use case number two, OpenStack hosted by the Kubernetes. So the control plane is actually hosted by the Kubernetes itself. Then we need a seamless networking between the OpenStack, which is running as a container. Then we also have uh, uh, VMs running as a, uh, sorry, the VM running in the KVM. So why we still need a VM, you know, if I can actually have everything as running in the container, because the transition between the VM to the container, it is not going to happen in a single day. And it's going to take some time in terms of you know, transitioning the VM into the container. And usually the large companies, you know, providers, they take a small baby step in moving from one to another. So in this case, you know, like there's no way to switch over everything in a single day to a container. So the transition has to happen small. So in all these cases, the very important thing we need to notice that you can see that you know, like the use cases are getting like more and more. So it is not just the VM and a container. We need a seamless way of connecting them. So the, in the first use case, we want the container running in a VM and container running in a bare metal. We need the way to talk between each other uh, through, through the OpenStack cloud. In the second use case, you know, like we have a set of VM running as a control plane, and there is a set of you know, like uh, OpenStack services or other control plane services running as a container. So we need a way of connecting them. The third use case is, is more of a tenant use case. And uh, it, this is pretty similar to the number two. So the number two is more of an infrastructure use case, but number three is more of the, uh, the tenant use case. So even in this case, what we really need is that we need a way of connecting the networking. So all these use cases, it's bottom one common idea theme we're seeing here is that we need to have a way of seamless way of connecting networking between the container and the VM. So this is a slide I talked about yesterday. I'm sort of repeating this content. Uh, the reason for emphasizing the edge over and over and over, because there's need to be a lot of community work need to be done in both the OpenStack and OpenContrail. Uh, in this case, you know, like the edge is really evolving very fast, and there are independent solutions, but we need to make sure that there is a community solution for this. So IoT space is really picking up a lot, and the AR, VR space is picking up a lot and a virtualized uh, mobile network, which is a VRAN uh, in support of the 5G, it is also coming up, and a virtualized wireline access, uh, that is also evolving a lot. So for example, universal CP. So all this thing, you know, like need something closer to the edge. Okay, the edge is a definition, you know, like vary from people to people. You know, some need, you know, like closer, even in the home deployment, some need, you know, like something in the cell tower. So it could be somewhere, you know, like between the customer place or even the cell phone uh, towards the, you know, like the, the data center where the large data center where the uh, many number of hosts has been deployed. So now we're talking about the scale of not 25, we're really talking about the scale of like a 25, you know, like 100 or you know, even at a 10,000 location. So in this large scale, you know, already the, the SDN and you know, like the cloud solution is, you know, it's complex and hard to manage within the 25 location. Now we are talking about you know, like 10,000 plus location. So if we don't have a common SDN theme uh, in terms of managing this large scale, then there is no way to deploy SDN based solution in this large, large instance of you know, like a location. So that is why we need a seamless way of connecting the network so my next slide is to show that uh, when a user requests an edge workload, right? So in an AR application, and a, there, is a, um, there is a glass a person is wearing, then it's connecting to the cell phone, and through the 5G or 4G, they connect to something, and there need to be a quick video processing need to be done. So in that case, you know, the video processing really need to happen very closer to the edge. So in this case, we could take the edges like a, a cell tower or in a central office, so in this case, what could happen is that, you know, like that processing, so now we have a connectivity from a cell phone uh, to the central of, uh, sorry, to the uh, cell tower, then from a cell tower there is a connectivity to the central office. But now here is a critical, ad, a critical situation is that this is what the industry need to solve from a use case perspective is that we will not be able to put all the workload in the edge because this is very, very critical because the edge is really going to be small. In the, especially if you're trying to put something in a customer home, I can't put 1,000 servers in your home, right? No, and I can't put 1,000 servers in you know, like a cell tower because the cell towers are usually small and small packed places. And, and also, the, how much hardware I can pack in a small form factor is also a very critical, you know, very, it's, it's hard to do thing with respect to the uh, with respect to the deployment. So that is why we need to think about, you know, like there need to be an automatic scheduling mechanism. We talked about one app, and one app could actually do this job as, uh, you know, 
uh, once the, the end application, end user application, requesting for a workload, and it says that, okay, here is the characteristics of this workload I need, and I want you to go and install this VM or a container and process this particular image or process this particular video and send that back to me, right? So that is a use case. So the scheduler can decide, okay, I'm gonna put it in a cell tower, and because this is where the application is asking for, but this application is asking for like a 40, uh, 40 VMs, for example. Oh, I can't put all these 40 VMs in this, uh, in this particular cell tower. Uh, these applications are very sensitive to the, the processing uh, in terms of the latency, so I'm gonna put it in a cell tower, some goes in telco office, and some goes to the data center. This is like scheduling across like multiple type of cloud at multiple location. So this is where we have to have an open standard API, irrespective of the provider, you know, the application need is something from an end user perspective to place anywhere. And also from a networking portion on the bottom portion of it, this is also a very critical piece, that's what, you know, like we want to talk uh, more about it, is a software defined network. Because now we're not talking about a single data center. We're not talking about a single instance of cloud. We are talking about, you know, like a 10,000 plus location spread across like all over the place. So how do we connect this in terms of, you know, like a networking perspective? Uh, there are solution in the, in the you know, pre-SDN solutions like MPLS, and there is many other way to connect through a physical uh, network connectivity in or through the common routing technologies. But if we do need to imply the SDN thing, then it has to be a seamless thing, you know, in terms of connecting this, you know, like VMs and containers uh, across like these multiple data centers. So that is the use case, one of the use cases need to be resolved. And uh, with that, I'm going to give the floor to Kasim. Thank you very much, Kandan. So we have next section, so we will now go through how we address all those challenges. So pretty much overall, the main challenge here is how the con uh, container networking and the VM networking can come together. And here uh, we have uh, overall, uh, uh, let me just switch the slides. Give me one minute. So in this section, we will cover how open contrail networking will address those uh, challenges. Costing, costing slides are not coming. Yeah. Uh, will be, it should come now. Okay, here it is. So first of all, from uh, networking side, how we are addressing, we are actually adopting this OpenStack Helm. So you might heard a lot of uh, talk about that, how Kubernetes is uh, coming into OpenStack and con containerization, the whole control plane. So we are taking that approach, so overall OpenStack Helm, that will provide a whole OpenStack as infrastructure as a service. And then there will be a whole containerization of OpenStack control plane, where we are actually using uh, OpenStack Cola and Stackernetes uh, 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 containers. And they are all combined together with the Helm charts. So this is actually the project which at and has started. Now it is part of OpenStack uh, Helm uh, 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 project as well. And then infrastructure side, uh, we have this uh, MariaDB uh, uh, RabbitMQ and other containers supporting that. And now the Contrail networking, how it will come into the picture, where Contrail has a Contrail controller, Contrail analytics, analytics TV, and the Contrail agent. So all those will come together and they will provide not only a networking for containers as well as your existing VNF and VM. So and how those things put together, that will be actually talk of our, about this to 10 to 15 minutes, and I, we actually put together a step-by-step -step process if someone would like to create that environment and how they can achieve that. So this is one of the main thing we wanna highlight. Everyone pretty much know how Contrail works in OpenStack, but this slide is more capturing how Contrail, Open Contrail is fully integrated into a Kubernetes. So in Kubernetes, uh, when the Kubernetes cluster is up, 
we actually are uh, uh, communicating through CNI plugin. So Open Control fully supports CNI plugin. Once the API request sent to create the pods, and the pods are instantiated on the respective compute, compute node one and two. At the same time, the controller actually send the information about the tap interfaces, what interfaces to be created with the IP address, and the CNI plugin, which is the binary that kick in and stitch the V router with interface to the container pod interface. In this way, they create the networking. Now, uh, once those pods are there, uh, you will get and leverage all the open control features which are available today. And how those things, you can set it up. So let's walk through step-by-step -step process. So we all understand how you can achieve that. And this is also a part of the demo which is available at the booth as well. So overall, here we are just showing uh, five uh, and compute nodes. Those are five bare metal services. So creating a Kubernetes cluster, installing Docker, Ubuntu, and Helm, uh, today it's a very straightforward process. So here we are assuming all the environment is set up at this stage. And once this environment is set up, you have uh, a cube system namespace, and the pods are created on the node side as well as the master Kubernetes master side. Now, the next step will be how uh, you can leverage Open Control Helm charts. Those Helm charts will go to the uh, directory, Docker registry, where they pull the containers for Open Control. And then they will instantiate respective pods and also the main uh, uh, control controller pods into the cube system. So those are highlighted in all the green color here. And at this stage, the uh, full Open Control is up. But our next step is how we can actually use the same networking for our OpenStack uh, containers as well. So before we go, there is a one more step, uh, which is actually the gateway function in OpenContrail. And you know that, that that gateway function provide an overlay and underlay connection for that. So at this stage, we actually configure our gateway with the respective route targets. So we have the pod virtual network and service virtual networks. And those networks are created because next time when we instantiate the open stacks, all the pod networks and service networks we will use accordingly to give the seamless connectivity for both containers and the virtual machines. So, so as part of OpenStack Helm charts, so this step we actually instantiate and we actually go to the OpenStack Helm repo. So that repo, we uh, get all the information, get the containers, then we will actually instantiate all across our OpenStack nodes, and then as well as the compute node where the containers instantiated. At this stage, we use a MARDA tool. So if, for using this MARDA tool, you can instantiate those pods for that. Now, once your environment is up, the next section is once you instantiate the VMs, creating the same experience which you are getting today. So the VNF which are running today in Open Control, they can leverage that. They can still run this uh, VM and networking for that side. And if someone would like to have a containers, they can actually also run those pods there. And then seamless integration connectivity you can achieve. So, so how this thing is achieved, so just to summarize this part, you can see this is how it looked like at very high level. So on, on the right hand side, we have a Kubernetes cluster and then the OpenStack cluster. So when Kubernetes APIs are used, they are coming through the CNI plugin, then, but they are using the same con open control controller there. And the same methodology used from the OpenStack side, and the OpenStack, when the Neutron plugin come in, it actually connect to the open control plugin, and then this open control plugin can instantiate for all type of edge. So the edge can be at the telco side, it can be edge as an IoT device, so definitely, the, from controller point of view, when the compute is added, either that compute will be part of a Kubernetes cluster, or either it can be part of OpenStack, or it can be part of both. But once the compute is there and the connectivity is available, the control controller will use standard control plane XMPP protocol to program the vRouter forwarding plane. And then uh, 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 for all the forwarding data, the MPLS over UDP and overlay tunnels can be established. So what we are showing here, using the one single SDN controller, you can instantiate both type of workloads, pod as well as VM, at your edge. 
And now if, other than telco side edge, if you have any remote side, distributed sites, those can be further extended from that point of view. Now just building a little bit more on uh, V-router uh, and edge capability point of view, I would like to highlight a couple of things here. So as you are aware, in V-router has full forwarding plane, where we have the full layer two, layer three functionality, worth support. There is another function in V-router, uh, which is available today, is the gateway function. So when the V-router is on the edge, and it is uh, 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 actually that thing we are highlighting here with this green line. So if you have multiple interfaces in your x86 box, you can leverage that feature to assign and control IP address assignment from that side. So what we are showing here, one uh, compute running a V-router, so it can have two interfaces under the control of V router uh, uh, kernel module and two interfaces which can be uh, actually program and get IP address and all the functionality through V router gateway function. And then the V router can talk to the central data center site via XMPP and they can also have MPLS over UDP tunnel established. And now all those infrastructure is already available through REST APIs heat templates are available, so any customer can use their existing orchestration and OSS BSS system to instantiate workload, not only to the distributed side, as well as the central side. So the edge side, central side, that will be just matter of your configuration and provisioning and pushing those APIs and program it and then utilize that. So, uh, and on, on top of that, uh, I would like to highlight from ONAP point of view, the similarly ONAP uh, can use those uh, APIs and uh, they can actually push this configuration. They can use heat templates and uh, standard OpenStack and Kubernetes API to establish end-to-end -end connectivity. So, in the next one, we are just uh, further extending the same use case, but we are actually showing from 5G uh, vRouter at that use case point of view. At the 5G, if you have your virtual BBU and virtual NRC, NRU, and some small form factor of virtual EPC, you can actually put it in a central distributed site, and then you can also push some functionality at the edge. And the similar way, you can leverage gateway functionality for your L2 and L3 connection to the towers or uh, any of the connectivity point of view. Definitely at this stage, there are concerns from latency, jitter point of view, but those things definitely can be uh, addressed as part of architect uh, and design point of view. Because when we are talking about virtual RAN, C RAN, or 5G, pretty much in the transport, the metrics and the KPIs are already there. So based on the KPI, the decision can be made what, the, what should be the uh, site where you can have some aggregators and where you can have your distributed edge standalone compute or multiple compute at, at the site as well. So the last use case quickly I would like to highlight uh, is from IoT uh, gateway point of view. Similarly, you can have uh, uh, the same concept. So this IoT, as you know, the most of the uh, services are already there. So those services are already available in AWS. Just to launch an IoT, you just go to Amazon, Google, and launch your IoT platform and start using uh, providing devices. But here, the message and the main purpose is for the customer who already have their own private data cloud and they want to leverage their own uh, uh, virtual EPC, they can actually introduce and leverage that and using the open contrail at the edge, which will fully support the Kubernetes and the VMs. They can have multiple tenant support uh, with the IoT platform point of view. We are just highlighting five different types of gateway. Those gateways can be an, uh, software gateways, or the gateway can be available as a hardware form factor. So those hardwares definitely need an IP connectivity that can be provided through the vRouter gateway function. And then connectivity to the tenant and end-to-end -end, uh, co uh, connectivity to the IoT platform can be provided through the overlay. So that is the whole message which we want to deliver at this stage. Yeah. Thank you, and uh, Thank we can you. take a few questions. Uh, uh, people who want to ask questions, I would appreciate if you can go to the microphone. So I had a question with the Kubernetes, the OpenStack on Kubernetes. You're putting uh, Neutron drivers in a container. Are, is the OpenStack 
um, neutron driver attaching to the NIC through the containerized NIC, or is it attaching to the infrastructure's NIC directly? So it is attaching to the infrastructure. So that is going through infrastructure and doing that. Thank, thank you. you. Hi, thanks. Um, I was curious uh, in the, maybe the you just used the 5G as a, uh, an example, what you might be thinking in terms of uh, high availability of, of processes. Uh, are you thinking that, uh, you know, in one little server pool um, that, you know, it's just a fast fail? Yeah. Yeah, uh, there are two, uh, uh, I will say not two, there are multiple aspects of uh, 5G high availability and resilience. So as you know, in mobility, virtual MME in a pool is a concept which is utilized from the mobility point of view to address that. But from VNF point of view, uh, someone can leverage v open contrail scale out model. So where we actually, if at the edge or some of the sites you have multiple computes and you want to instantiate multiple VNFs, you can use the scale out model if one goes down, the other one still be available, and then through the orchestration monitoring, we can instantiate more workload based on our requirement. So those are the two different aspects. Some application actually support that. So especially for 5G point of view, the virtual MME is the most critical point. Definitely virtual MME in a pool will be leveraged for, for, for that side as well. Thanks. All right, thank you guys for joining the session. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you guys.